Mall of America. For more than 30 years, it has been a retail leader and an international destination, and it remains the largest mall in the U.S. Not to mention it welcomes millions of guests from around the world. It's huge, but it's also so much more. In this podcast, you're going to hear the real stories of how it started and why it continues to thrive. You'll hear about challenges we faced along the way and what you can learn from them. We will feature guests and experts from all walks of life and business. And along the way, you'll laugh, learn, and maybe even change the way you look at things. So if you're a fan of the mall, a brand new visitor, an entrepreneur, or a dreamer, prepare to dive deep into so much more. This podcast is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition, this episode of So Much More. I am your host, Dan Jasper, and with me, as always, is my colleague, my friend, my coworker, Jill Renslow. Hey, Jill, how are you? I'm doing great, Dan. Good. It's good to see you again. Always good to see you. We have a really special guest. Um, I have a couple questions for you, Jill. Do you like food? Love food. Entrepreneurship? Love food. Following your dreams? Love. Then this podcast is for you. (laughs) Um, Joining us today is Monique Voles, who started the extremely successful blog, Ambitious Kitchen, and she started it right here in Minnesota, where she grew up. That's right. Monique is from Minnesota, and she graduated from the University of St. Thomas, which is when she started that blog. Oh, Tommy's. I love it. Yeah. And it has since grown to more than a million followers. And most recently, she published a cookbook called The Ambitious Kitchen Cookbook, 125 Ridiculously Good for You, Sometimes Indulgent, and Absolutely Never Boring Recipes for Every Meal of the Day. Welcome, Monique. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys doing? We're good. Thank you so much for joining us. I love having a Minnesota girl from St. Thomas. We have that in common. I'm also a St. Thomas grad. So go Tommies. Oh, amazing. Yeah, (laughs) amazing. It's awesome. Yeah, we love that your roots are here in Minnesota. Uh, You grew up in Minnesota, graduated from St. Thomas in marketing and business. Um, Can you, let's start off this discussion, this conversation with, tell us your journey from how you began your blog to where we are today. Of course. Yeah. So I was in college at the time and I sort of was following a couple different food blogs on the internet. It was, it was a weird time because food blogs were just starting out. Pinterest didn't exist. Instagram didn't exist. So I was following a few of those that were out there and I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm so passionate about food. You know, this is something that I think I could do. And also working in food has had always been my dream job. You know, my dream job really was working at General Mills, which I got that job after college. But, you know, I was really processing a couple different things at that time. My father passed away a few days before I went to college. I was dealing with an eating disorder and I really wanted to kind of just write down everything that I was going through, reconnect to my parents through food and kind of just be vulnerable and introduce myself to a new community of people that may be going through something similar. Um, And so I started it when I was in my senior year of college and, you know, a couple of years later, next thing I knew, it was just growing and growing and growing at this exponential rate. You know, Pinterest came around a couple of years later and then there was Instagram and, with all of the social media platforms, just my reach grew and grew. And, you know, here we are 10 plus years later and um, truly feel like I'm living my dream. And it's been such a wonderful journey. Um, but yeah, Minnesota girl started it all there. And now I'm in Chicago, but still love Minnesota. I, I love it. And, and we look forward to when you come back and visit with us. Um, I, looking through your cookbook, we got uh, we were able to take a peek at it before our conversation. And you talked a little bit about your relationship with food. And I think a lot of people have, sometimes have challenging relationships with food, right? There are uh, good memories and there's also challenging. I know you speak about your mother and your grandmother and uh, your mother as a single mom, her passion for cooking for you and your brother, and uh, and then also the, the other relationship you had with your father too, and then you talk about your eating disorder. Just for, for the sake of our listeners and some other people who might have this challenge, talk a little bit more about what that was like and how you came to this really healthy relationship. It took a really, really long time to kind of 
get to a healthy relationship with food. It wasn't like I just turned a switch, you know, I think I really had to rediscover food as a source of joy instead of looking at it like it was either good or bad. And so my intention with my website and also my cookbook is to really show people that food can be used for different you know, just like different learning moments. I mean, it's about gathering with our family and friends, but it's also about nourishing your body and you can have both at the same time. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And I think a lot of us grew up thinking that, you know, we had to eat everything on our plate. We had, if, you know, we were only, we were like eating little Debbie's and things like that. And, and I don't think we really understood the nutrition behind the food. And so my whole goal with Ambitious Kitchen is really to bring a sense of ambition to people's lives in whatever way that might mean for them when it comes to food, right? We all have our own definition of health and wellness and what that looks like for each of us. We're all very different when it comes to, you know, what foods we like. Um, And so I really just want to empower people to feel their best eat their best, whatever that means to them, get a little more ambitious in their kitchen. But I think, um, overall, you know, my relationship, it took 10 plus years to get to a point where I felt really, really confident and good, um, with my relationship with food and exercise. It was just, it was a journey, right? Well, I love it. And congratulations on all your success already. I'm sure you've had a lot of learnings along the way, but seeing you on all the different channels and now with your new cookbook, I mean, just kudos to you. And I love the word ambitious. I mean, it means brave. It means confidence. It means joy. And I just, I love that because you can connect with your viewers and followers and listeners through so many different um, pieces of content. So I think that's just been fantastic. So how do you do it all? I mean, how do you balance everything? You're a a young mom. You have three little ones at home. Um, You're continuing to follow your dreams and your career and being an entrepreneur. How do you balance all of the things that are happening at the same time? (laughs) Um, I wouldn't say that I feel balanced by any means. You know, I think I, I am very much ambitious. I like to set big goals for myself, but at the same time, becoming a mother has really slowed me down in a way that was good for me and helped me to rebalance my priorities. So writing a cookbook was something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. Um, and I wrote it when I was pregnant and also had a newborn. So it was like, it's just, kind of always chaotic in our house. I mean, we have three little boys. They're crazy. They're, you know, jumping off the couch 24 seven. Um, so I think I'm just used to that, but I also really have a wonderful partner that allows me to really do what I do best and supports me and I support him and we just really help balance each other. So I think he, having him, you know, just really able to take care of our boys when I need to work and things and vice versa. Um, that's the way that I'm able to kind of do all the things. And we really have this, like, I feel like a really good balance now that our youngest is almost two where we don't feel like we're drowning (laughs) all the time. (laughs) Um, but you know, it's just like leaning on family and friends and, um, knowing when to slow down is really, really important. So you don't get burned up. I love that. And what was the point in your journey when you realized this was could be a career for you? Obviously, it started with your passion. And as you were a college student, figuring out how this was going to work. But what was it that all of a sudden flipped the switch where you're like, you know what, I can make some money doing this and I can actually do this as a career. Is there a, a memory that you could share with us? There definitely is. You know, it was funny. The first couple of years of blogging, I joined an ad network and I think I was making like $10 a month on my blog, even though I had pretty good views. I just didn't understand a way to monetize it. And then finally, once I got with a different ad network, um, things just started to grow. And I was working at General Mills at the time in social media. And once my income from the blog reached my income that I was making at General Mills, I knew that I was on to something and I knew at the rate that it was growing month over month that I could really turn it into a career, which is something that I never really set out to do. I set out for it to be sort of this passion project and something that I really just wanted to do because I loved it. And then, you know, I think 
it just, it kept growing and I sort of did it at the right moment, right time kind of thing. So I feel very, very, um, lucky in that regard, but yeah, it was three years in and I didn't intend on quitting my job that day, but I sort of went in and I was like, you know what, if I don't do it now, like when am I going to do it? Because I had been thinking about it for months and months. And so I went into my boss's office and I was like, okay, I'm quitting. (laughs) So I'm quitting. Um, and, and then I moved to Chicago like two months later and kind of never looked back. Yeah. So as far as when you look at your path that you took, as far as, and you took that entrepreneurial courageous move, what type of advice do you have for other potential entrepreneurs that might be interested in following a path that's their dream or something that they want to chase? Um, Because it is, it's courageous, it's bold, it's um, probably very nerve wracking. Um, But do you have any advice for young entrepreneurs? I do. I think the hardest part is starting. And a lot of times people think so much about an idea or a concept or whatever it is, and they never really do anything about it. So if you find yourself thinking about it nonstop, take the first step because the first step is actually starting it. You know, if you're, if you're spending all your time, like, Oh, what would it be like to open a gym? You know, it's like, okay, start looking into like what that process is actually like. Talk to other people who do the same thing. And that's exactly what I did when I was living in Minnesota. You know, there was an amazing group of foodies there. I used to work, I used to intern at Minnesota Monthly Magazine. Um, so I knew a lot of great people, including like Jason DeRussia. And so anytime I was able to kind of make a connection, Um, or have a conversation, I was constantly doing that and just gaining advice and sort of inserting myself into this food world. Um, And I think that's what, you know, if you're passionate about something, that is my advice. Reach out to people who have done the same thing, build your community in whatever world you want to be in and just take that knowledge and consume it as much as possible. And then take the first step you have, even if it's small, it could be the smallest thing is like doing research, (laughs) take the first step and then you'll get to the next step. I love that. Thank you for sharing that advice. That is great. Um, First of all, is it wrong that I had little Debbie's for breakfast? (laughs) And lunch. (laughs) It's, it's not, my husband had this, my husband had the same thing and he still loves them to this day. (laughs) Actually in the cookbook, I have a recipe called little Debra's. It's a grown up version of little <laughs> Debbie's. It's a strawberry oatmeal cream pie. Oh. Um, so very fun. Yeah. But no, I think a lot of our parents gave us things like toaster strudel, little Debbie's pop tarts. Nobody thought about the fact that they actually are kind of a dessert for breakfast, right? They're, they're delicious. <laughs> I, I love them quite honestly. They are delicious. And I know baking is special for you too. Uh, you know, in the beginning of your cookbook, there's some delicious looking cookies. I think there's a story around that perhaps. And mm-hmm. um, why is baking important to you? And you talk about how it brings back some memories. Yeah, my dad, he was a baker. And I think for me, and I think also for a lot of people, it's very therapeutic, right? Like, you spend time creating, it's like a project. You have to put your time and energy and love into this baked good. And most of the time you're sharing it with someone else, right? So it's like the art of bread making. It takes time and it's like you're spending an hour or two waiting for it to rise. You're rolling it. You're spending another hour waiting for it to rise. And so by the end of it, you spent like most of your day creating this whole project. And I think there's something to be said about also working with your hands, whether it's kneading dough. Um, It's just, it's the art of, I don't know. It's just like a love letter. And I think for a lot of us, it's very nostalgic. I mean, I remember baking with my parents all the time, especially my dad. And I think there are a lot of fond memories that come around that because you do have to spend a little bit more time doing it. So um, yeah, my dad was a baker and I, You know, he taught me how to make chocolate frosting from scratch, pies, cakes, everything. And so it has kind of been my love language. Anytime I'm stressed, I love to just 
bake some cookies and have fun and experiment with flavors. I love that. So any Minnesota favorites that you continue to keep with you? We know we love our hot dishes here in Minnesota. Is there anything that is true to your roots that you continue to make or some of those family favorites that you bring for the holidays? Well, definitely in Minnesota, they were called special K bars. At least that's what I always had. So (laughs) yeah. Yeah. And a lot of places, different people, like sometimes they're called scotch roos. It depends what you make them with, but there also is an ode to Minnesota in the cookbook. I have salted scotch roos and you can make them with special K cereal or rice krispies, but, um, definitely still love and adore those. Um, and of course, like a tater tot hot dish. I haven't had that in years. (laughs) (laughs) It was, it's not on my like rotation, but you know, I think like Swedish meatballs and things like that were very popular when I was growing up. So yeah, anytime I come to Minnesota and I'm with family, um, usually one of those two things are on the menu. So for some of us that aspire to be a better cook, a better baker. What are those must have ingredients that you have in your cupboard that you could not live without? So many. <laughs> but <laughs> My pantry is actually a disaster um, because I have so many different flowers. But, you know, for me, I love to bake with a more nutritious flour. That's uh, and I like to teach people that you can bake gluten-free without really knowing you're baking gluten-free. So an almond flour and an oat flour combination are one of my favorites to use in both cookies and cakes um, or breads, muffins, really anything. It's just very nutty and slightly sweet and absolutely delicious. So those are uh, two must-haves, I would say, for my baking pantry. And I have a question since you, your love of baking, what do your boys love to bake and what's their favorite thing to make? They love anything with like chocolate candies in there. Yep. I I like that. (laughs) Anything with chocolate. Yep. I love it. Yeah. And, um, you know, recently they started loving butterscotch. So, which I, I love butterscotch. Some people think it's too sweet, but I absolutely love it. So sometimes we do like Greek yogurt bowls for something a little bit better for you after their dinner. And then I let them put like butterscotch chips or sprinkles, really anything, um, the sprinkles or chocolate chips they love, but they love making, um, any sort of like oatmeal cookie. And then we just add M&M's. So we heard you had a special recipe that might have crashed your blog back then. (laughs) Can you share what recipe that was that everybody was going crazy over? Yes. So they were my brown butter chocolate chip cookies and I stuffed them with Nutella. Um, And it was like before people were doing that. So it was just sort of something I came up with randomly one day I was like what if I just did this and they were so delicious and another famous blogger at the time reposted them on her blog and it just went viral crashed my site it was all over Pinterest for years and years and years so that is sort of my claim to fame what really blew up my blog those sound absolutely delicious so is that in your cookbook I want to check it out yeah the brown (laughs) butter chocolate chip cookies are and then I show how to make them with Nutella Perfect. So you're going on the road. You've got this tour coming up. I am. Um, What are you most excited about and what are you a little nervous about as well? I am definitely most excited to meet everybody. I think I've had my site for a really long time. So some people have been following me for years and years and years. So I'm just sort of looking forward to connecting with people who have made my recipes for you know, certain events or they have a story behind them. That's always fun to hear. Um, recently I was talking with someone who I just met and she was like, yeah, I make your cake for my son every single year. So it's stories like that, that are really, really special. Um, and then, you know, I think what I'm a little bit nervous about is just being away from my kids for so long. I've never been away from my kids for that long. I don't think. 
Well, we're excited to have you here in Minnesota towards the end of September. So people can check out your tour yes. dates on your site and also obviously to purchase your cookbook because it is quite the find. I know this is something that I'm going to add to my Christmas wish, wish list. It's a great time of year to add those things to your list with us. It looks awesome. And I think it's a great collection of such a variety of, of recipes. That's what I'm super excited about. It's, it's awesome. When I looked through too, I saw a lot of vegetarian options. I happen to be vegetarian. <clears throat> so I appreciated that as well. Um, good, good. I'm, I'm curious, is there one recipe in the book that it's like, this is the one you've got to check out? Well, I don't want to say a meat one now. So well, you can, <laughs> no, that's fine. You can say, my son would love that. Um, so my chipotle, gouda, pumpkin, turkey, enchiladas are wow. very, very good. I adore that recipe. Um, but if we're talking about vegetarian ones, I um, I love my mom's Puerto Rican rice and beans. It's exceptional. And then there's these amazing like couscous, cherry tomato, stuffed peppers that are great for freezing. I do it all the time. And they're really delicious with like, you know, you could do a side of protein if you want, but those are good too. Well, coming yeah. from Mob America and all about shopping, I was intrigued to see the shop section on your site. And I'm curious to learn a little bit about um, your inspiration there and that connection to it's not only ideas and kind of your favorites from what you see in the kitchen, but you also feature products as far as that are just your favorites, whether it's, you know, clothing, if it's other like toys and things, your kids. So how did that come about? And what does that look like as you go into the future? Of course. Yeah. So we put together a massive gift guide every single year on my site. And I started doing that. Oh, I don't know, probably six years ago. Um, and from there, people just loved it so much. So I wanted to kind of create a shop where I could house everything so that when people ask me for links, like, oh, do you have any great kid gift ideas? You know, my son's having a birthday party or, um, you know, I'm looking for a gift for my mom for Mother's Day that I could really just send them to one place. And so it's something that I've built year after year. And so for certain holidays, we'll put together gift guides with just little fun ideas to just make people's lives a little bit easier. Um, but also, you know, I like to share just everyday things that my kids use. I think that I've looked on other people's sites a lot, or I've just asked friends for recommendations. So sometimes if you don't know a friend that is a mom and you don't have somebody to ask who has a child the same age as yours. It's nice to be able to look at somebody else's and say like, Oh, she recommends this product and this is why, um, and make a purchase. So it's great. I mean, it shows think, the power of yeah. your influence with your followers and the trust that they have in you and looking for advice even beyond the kitchen. So I think that's fantastic. And it really shows that you're very authentic and genuine in the content that you share and the relationships that you build with your followers. I think it's fantastic. And having Thank grown you. grown up in Minnesota and, and gone to college here, um, I'm mm -hmm. hoping you came out to Mall of America once or twice during... Do you have some favorite oh. Mall of America <laughs> memories? Every weekend I was there because it was like a 10-minute drive from St. Thomas. So I kid you not, I was there every single Saturday. We would get up. We were a little hungover. You know, I was like 21 <laughs> at the time, 20. And... We would go to the mall and we would be there until we, I mean, we'd spend most of the day there. We'd eat there. We'd go to the Orange Julia's. I don't know if it's still there. Um, and, you know, Forever 21 was where we shop at the time. It's <laughs> Pretty still <much>. here. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, you know, and H&M and things like that. So, and we just would walk and it was awesome. Like we just bopped around. It was something that we always did myself and my two best friends who are my best friends to this day. We still talk about like how we would always drive to the mall of America. And then afterwards we would go back and eat and then get ready to do it all over again. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, everyone yeah. has great memories out here at mall of America, especially when we're younger. It's there's so much to do so much fun oh, yeah. for our listeners. Where can they find out more information about ambitious kitchen and your cookbook? Yeah. So everything is available on my website, ambitiouskitchen.com slash cookbook. You can find information on how to order the book, 
grab tickets to my book tour um, and all that good stuff. So everything you need. And you can also find me on Instagram at Ambitious Kitchen. Awesome. We look forward to this. Any other questions, Jill, that you had? No, I'm just super excited because I now have more time on my hands being an empty nester to do some cooking. So I am all over this cookbook and so excited to check out these recipes. So thank you for your inspiration and for sharing your talents with us. It's been a delight. Yeah, we're so glad you're able to join us today. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. And for everyone who's tuning in, um, please feel free to follow us wherever you follow your favorite podcast. And we will see you next time on So Much More. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of So Much More. If you want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to our podcast wherever you find your favorites, including Spotify, Apple, or Google Podcasts. And you can also watch a video cast on YouTube. Go to podcast.mallofamerica.com to leave a review, ask a question, or give us an idea for the show. Until next time, thanks for listening. So Much More is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau, the official destination marketing organization for the city of Bloomington, Minnesota. Before your next trip to Mall of America, visit bloomingtonmn.org for answers to all your travel questions, deals and packages for hotel stays, and so much more.